11, 1961. Trumpets herald the arrival in Washington of the Pakistani jetliner bearing President Mohammad Ayub Khan. First to greet President Ayub is American President John F. Kennedy. With President Ayub is his lovely daughter, Begum Aurangzeb. The two presidents are joined by American Secretary of State Dean Rusk and other dignitaries. Mrs. Kennedy and Begum Aurangzeb exchange greetings. President Ayub makes his way along the reception line, while President Kennedy greets each member of the visiting Pakistani party. Prominent among them are Pakistan's Minister of External Affairs, Manzoor Qadir, and Minister of Finance, Mohammad Shaweb. It is a great pleasure and great honor for me to welcome our distinguished visitor, the President of Pakistan. We are glad to have you here because you come uh, as the head of an important and powerful country which is allied with us in CETO, which is associated with us in CENTO, which represents a powerful force for freedom in your area of the world. I am overwhelmed by the warmth of reception, Mr. President, you have given me and very kind words you have expressed about my country and its relationship with your country. Now I'm looking forward to having the opportunity of exchanging views with you, and I have no doubt that our area of understanding uh, will enlarge as a result of it, and our friendship will get stronger. Full military honors are paid to President Ayub, World War II veteran of the Burma Front and the former commander of his country's armed forces. In Mr. Kennedy's new presidential limousine, the two presidents acknowledge the cheers of the throng. The end of the parade finds the presidential party at the Blair House, the president's official guest house, where the distinguished visitor will stay for the first three days of his eight-day visit in the United States. A few miles up the Potomac River from Washington is Mount Vernon, home of George Washington, the first president of the United States. President Ayub and his daughter are the guests of President and Mrs. Kennedy at a state dinner there. It is the first time a state dinner is held at this historic shrine. I regard it as a great privilege to have been given the opportunity to address this august body, the most powerful and the most distinguished representative institution in the world. I come from Pakistan.
In his address, President Ayub reviews the grave problems which face his country. He tells the representatives of the American people that if Pakistan is to retain its dearly loved freedom, it must modernize its education, its agriculture, and its industry. Washington's Islamic Center and Mosque is one of the many beautiful religious centers of the nation's capital. President Ayub arrives to visit this place of worship for Washington's Muslims. In the courtyard, the president observes a fountain, which is a replica of one in the Alhambra in Spain. Next morning, the president and his daughter leave Washington for New York City. New York City, America's largest metropolis, city of skyscrapers, home of eight million people, site of the headquarters of the United Nations. The welcome traditionally reserved by the city for its most distinguished visitors is a ticker tape parade. Tons of confetti and festoons of paper ribbons are showered on President Ayub as he makes his way up the thronged thoroughfare.